If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman and spiritual coach. And I am here today with my co-host, as always, Catherine Loringer, my best friend in Boquete here. She is also a spiritual business coach. And we are here to talk to you today about all things business and in the outside world. So on Mondays, we do the inner world. On Wednesdays, we do the outer world and how those relate. And then on Fridays, of course, we do our magic. But so today we're going to talk about what it's like to be a stripper at work. (laughs) And no, we don't mean the stripper pole. We mean... (laughs) (laughs) I was was a little concerned there. (laughs) We're both older than pre-Facebook, so... (laughs) There is that, yeah. The what we're talking about today is is about stripping away the mask that we wear to try and appear acceptable to others and things like that. And so we're talking about transparency and authenticity and how those can be your greatest strengths in the workplace. And so, you know, Catherine and I are both entrepreneurs, obviously, we're business owners. And so I think I would like to talk about that from this perspective, but this applies in corporate world too. So take that for whatever you will based on what you're listening and we will go forward from here. So let's talk about the mask first, because there is a mask that many of us wear. In fact, I wore a mask. I, and so for, for those of us who are energetically aware and adept, we can put on an energetic mask in addition to a personality mask. And I did not realize that I had an energetic mask on. By the way, an energetic mask is called a glamour. And so I did not realize that I was wearing a glamour for many, many years until I actually cut my hair like from mid back to above the shoulders and no one noticed I was like, it's kind of a big shift for nobody to know. I waited two weeks for somebody to say something. Two weeks. Nobody said a word. I finally Mm. looked at people and said, did you not realize that I cut like eight inches off my hair? And they looked at me and they looked at me really, really hard. And they looked and they were like, oh, yeah, I guess you did, huh? And I realized in that moment that they were really working hard to look through the mask that I was wearing energetically because Mm. I had this thing up that said, I'm perfect. I got it all together. Don't worry about me. I am, I am the queen of everything. I've got this, right? That was my mask. And it was so hard. It was so solid energetically that people couldn't see that I cut my hair, <laughs> which is so weird. So, you know, mm. these are the sorts of things that happen when we wear an energetic mask is that we, we don't get seen. And so, you know, that's, that was one of my biggest things at the time too, is that I felt so unseen. I was like, well, duh, you're not being seen. You're wearing a yeah. mask that says I'm perfect. <laughs> And of course, nobody noticed if that was your, if that was your thing, right? They couldn't see, they couldn't see. Yeah. And so, you know, the masks that we wear are really, they're, they're designed to control other people's perceptions of us because somewhere inside we have a fear that we're not good enough as we are. And that's, that's what those masks are all about is, is trying to manage the perception of other people. And so when we talk about authenticity and transparency, we're talking about letting down those masks. We're talking about stopping trying to control other people's perception of you, right? Mm. And, mm. and to just allow them to see the real you. Because, you know, personally, when you have a mask up and people can't see you, then you're guaranteed that you're going to be attracting people who don't like the real you because they're being attracted to the mask. 
And if you ever let the real you show, there's a good chance that they're not going to like it because they came for the mask and they got bait and switched, right? Mm. Whereas if you just be yourself and you let the mask down, then there's a good chance that the people who are attracted are going to actually like you, the real you, not the mask you, because they get to see it and they're attracted to it. And so, you know, from a personal perspective, it's like setting yourself up to win to when you let down the mask. But, you know, we fear judgment and that's why we don't do it. Right. Mm-hmm. You want to talk to you want to talk to that, Catherine? Yeah, I just as always so much going on in my mind about whatever we're talking about. So, you know, I really love that that idea and I agree with it fully that we do wear these masks that are designed to really control perception and that's about keeping us safe, right? It's a it's a way that we learn to be safe in the world. And I think we're, you know, we're talking about leadership today and so there's also an element where as a leader, it's requiring you to actually show up and have a different level of perception on yourself and others. There's there's a broadening awareness and understanding that's required as you grow your leadership journey. So the first step in leadership is, is leading yourself. And that requires taking that mask off to yourself. So knowing who you are, what your challenging bits are, what your strengths are, what your defaults are in terms of how you communicate, how you show up in the world where those kind of gritty edges are that you're really not comfortable with, maybe in conflict or showing up fully as yourself. Because I think that when we're in a leadership position, you don't want to go from being fully masked to kind of like taking them all off and then like running around like a total like freak show, right? And not to, not to say that everybody's, anybody's going to do that, <laughs> but there is this like this inquiry that you need to go through so that you can show up authentically as a leader, but also a level of discernment in terms of what is appropriate at different kind of layers and levels, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, and you know, I was a, so um, we're going back mm, 20 some years now. I was a manager of a real estate office and I was managing 20 new real estate agents. And, uh, you know, one of the things that happened for me was I, I had taken this job straight off of walkabout. So I had done my, my walkabout and I came back and I was like, yeah, okay, I'll do this. And so I was a year out from having ever done work right? because I'd been on walkabout for a year. And so coming back into the environment was super stressful for me. Right. And so one of the things that I was sitting with is, you know, I've got all these 20 new agents. They're freaking out about everything because they're brand new. They don't know anything. And you know, I'm like, I need to be solid. I need to have a solid container for them because I need to be the person that that they come to for looking for leadership and things like that. But I was also super stressed, right? Yeah. yeah. And so I made what I did was I made sure that they had a solid container as in I set expectations, I set parameters, I set boundaries, I made sure that they knew how to do things. I was available when they needed it, but I was also super stressed. And I I, when the stress got to the point where I needed to say something about it, I did. I said, Mm -hmm. look, I have been like this for a while now and I need a break. So Mm -hmm. I need you guys to take care of each other for a little bit Mm -hmm. while I take a little break. And, and, you know, they all immediately jumped in and said, oh, how can I help you? Can I do this? Can I do that? Can I do the other thing? Because I had been so helpful for them. They suddenly wanted to help me. And so it became a team, right? Mm -hmm. As a leader, we have to hold the container for our staff, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. it doesn't mean we have to be the invincible figurehead, right? Exactly. We, We need to communicate with our staff to let them know what's going on. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if, if there's been a lot, you need to say it's been a lot, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. somebody's coming at you with, I need, I need, I need you. And you don't have any bandwidth for it. You need to look at them and say, 
I'm out of spoons, you know, and for those of you who don't know, spoons are a term used for mental health saying, how much energy do I have to get through the day? And it's just like, mm, I'm out of spoons for the day. Or you just say, look, I can't do this today. Can you put it in an email for me and I will look at it tomorrow, right? That's mm -hmm. a, a, a valid response. You can't just disappear on them because that makes them feel unheld, right? Mm -hmm. But you can say, I'm out for the day. I will respond in the morning. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I, uh, I actually, I saw something online recently where somebody who was a CEO of the company had set, sent a message to one of their employees and said, look, I recognize that mental health is a thing. I have sent this email to you at a time when it was convenient for me. And I would hope that you would respond at a time that is convenient for you. Wow. Which I was like, ha, oh, thank wow. you. Right. I mean, wow. Yeah, that is amazing. And Kelly, what I'm hearing there too, is that you went in intentionally in terms of setting the container. So as the leader, you do, you hold the energetic container, you set the, the parameters around safety for your, for your team. And that could include, you know, volunteers or employees or clients, especially. And so, yes, absolutely being authentic and vulnerable is important, but there are levels of, you know, like there's levels of sharing that are appropriate based on the different, the different levels. And, you know, I think there are so many toxic, really toxic organizations out there that set people up to be punished when perhaps they're authentic or struggling or vulnerable and there aren't the supports there. For, for for people when they're in those spaces. So yeah. And I, I think that as a leader, it's our job to create a healthy environment. Mm -hmm. Because we can't be in a non-toxic space if we are not holding a non-toxic space for our, our employees, for our, our contractors, for our clients, whatever. Yeah. And so it in order to have a healthy environment, you need to be a healthy person. Mm -hmm. Because whatever your unhealthy habits are are going to translate it's yeah. like and and i don't want to i don't want to associate parenting with being a boss because women do that far too often but in this one instance it is totally true y your your employees just like your kids will reflect you and so you need to be what you want to create not say one thing and hope that they will be be you know and, mm. and then do something else and hope that they'll follow your saying this and not your doing this yeah. because whatever your doing this is whatever your being this is is what they're going to follow the vibration everything oh totally it's everything frequency yeah i walked into a store today i had to go into town to buy a, a wi-fi repeater and i walked into the store and there are these two people in the corner, obviously the owner and either his wife or, you know, somebody who's his administrative assistant, I couldn't tell. And he's just like, raw, 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 raw. in a language I did not understand. Okay. It, I think, I think they're Arab. So, you know, they, I think it was Arabic that they were speaking, but it was a language I didn't understand. But I looked at the employee and I said, I don't understand a word he's saying, but I understand who he is. And the employee just looked at me and I was like, so let me guess his way or the highway, everything is all screwed up. Nothing is ever right. And you're always the problem. And he looked at me and went, yes. <laughs> that was it. And I was just like, that was, I, I walked in the store. I was there for 20 seconds and I knew who that guy was and what his business was all about. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And that's a, that's a toxic environment right there. You should have seen the employee's energy. It was terrible. Yeah. And things are evolving. I mean, on the planet, obviously, like, hello, if you haven't haven't noticed that yet, that's newsflash, things are evolving. And so the toxic environment sat at one point, I think people didn't know any better, right? right. They're waking up and it's no longer acceptable. So from a business perspective, it's actually a competitive advantage to have a healthy work environment. 
and as a leader to to be able to be authentic, which we're talking about, right? To be able to be open and honest and and transparent. And to do that requires that you start doing that for yourself because you can't hold that space for somebody else if you can't hold it for yourself. Yeah. And it also means being able to be aware of your own needs and your own stress levels, Mm -hmm. which I wasn't for a long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember I was 19 and my boss had been taking the, the brand new version of Prozac, which sent people into insanity. And she had one of the bad reactions and she just went off the rails and disappeared. And I was left at 19 running her, her business. And there was an administrative assistant who was 35. And here I'm at 19 trying to run this business, have no experience running businesses. I'm trying to figure it out as I go. And I one day my my assistant just started this shorthand and she looked at me and she said, would you like a cup of tea? And I said, no, I don't need a cup of tea. And she was like, I think you need a cup of tea. Mm-hmm. And I looked at her and I said, I don't know, Mary, do I need a cup of tea? She's like, you need a cup of tea. I said, okay. And so she got me a cup of tea and I went and sat in the corner until I could be civil again because Mm. I had started being obnoxious and Mm -hmm. that became our shorthand. And, you know, sometimes you have to listen to your admin staff. If you haven't got the emotional maturity yet to figure it out on your own, listening to your admin staff and letting them tell you that you need a cup of tea is a good idea. Uh Because that made everybody's life better. The fact that I said, okay, I will take a cup of tea. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And we all have blinders, right? And and that's the thing when you're running a business, when you're running an organization, there are going to be times where there's more on your plate than feels reasonable to handle. And the level of fact probably is reasonable to handle. And so you know, it, it can often tend to be the overachievers and the type A personalities and the, you know, out of girls. And, the, you know, we're used to getting shit done. That's why mm. we're in these positions. And so it can, it can be common, I think, to just think, I'll just add one more thing. I'll just add one more thing. So we can't see our blind spots often, right? So having those people around you, your admin staff, your team members, your mentors, your coaches, whoever that is to support you in in seeing how it is that you're showing up and to help you navigate into a position that's more in alignment with who you want to be. Yeah. Well, and I have my assistant is empowered to tell me no when I want to go off on a wild hair and do something wild and strange and different because I like to do that because I'm like a super creative person. And I'm like, Ooh, wouldn't this be fun? Let's do this. And she goes, no, <laughs> no, no, Kelly. No. But, but it would no be fun. Bueno. And she said, no, you have told me that these are our things that we're doing this year. And this is all that we're doing this year. And we are not doing anything else. And you told me I'm supposed to tell you no. And I was like, okay but I really want to do it. (laughs) She's like, I know we can put it on the calendar for next year. And I'm like, okay, (laughs) I don't like it, but I gave her, I, I empowered her to do that. And it makes her life easier because I will make her crazy. If I don't, if, if I don't give her the per, the permission to say no to things. You know, this year was our year of transition. We we rebranded last year. This year we are redoing all of our back-end systems and transitioning them into a single platform and doing all of that. And then next year will be the expansion year and we'll do things around that. But you know, the the overachiever in me wants to do it all yesterday, right? I am very frustrated that we haven't finished the process that we're already doing because I have things I want to do, right? <laughs> so, but you know, that's part of the thing is that we have to recognize our own limitations. We have to recognize that in in despite that in the energetic world things happen instantly on in the physical plane, they take a little longer, which is no. very frustrating for those of us used to living in the the energetic plane. So in terms of transparency and authenticity, when we tell the truth and we tell the truth in a way that is constructive, not destructive, right? So I want to be very clear that this isn't about, you know, 
finding a, you know, the the kill him with kindness or the you know the brutal honesty brutal honesty is not a kind thing brutal honesty is is actually abusive just for the record this is about being able to speak what's true and do it in a way that is constructive not destructive of your business and of your staff and so when you are conscious on your own of your own needs and your own feelings and your own desires and your own everything and then you can share that with others then they can see what's true for you and they can adjust accordingly right so like i'm i'm with the launch of this podcast right i'm working with uh, someone on the launch of this podcast and when we first got started she was three weeks out from a wedding and I was expecting to launch at a certain time. And, you know, we got to a week out from the wedding and I was like, yeah, this isn't going to happen. <laughs> like, and then she had a week after the wedding where she was on her honeymoon and whatever. And, and I'm just like, it is what it is. Right. Because I could see what was going on for her. And the need for it to be a good partnership in the process was more important to me than the need to launch at a specific date. And had I pushed it, she would have made it happen, but it would have been miserable for both of us. And instead, because I could see what was going on for her, and she had a lot of other things going on too, but because I could see what was going on for her, I was like, mm, we'll just push, we'll punt, it'll be fine, not a heart attack. So, you know, a couple of weeks is not going to kill me. And so this is the, the sort of thing that transparency helps with is that you can see what's going on for the other person. And now suddenly it's, it's, it makes sense. Right. And when you make space for your, your employees, your contractors to tell you what's true for them, rather than just like holding them to some ridiculous standard, then now you can speak with authenticity. Now you can understand what's going on. When you make space for people to be human, then their humanity comes through and you get more information as a leader that's invaluable. Right? So what we're saying is be a stripper at work. <laughs> but not the pole kind. But not the pole kind. Yeah. <laughs> and, and when appropriate, when appropriate. Yeah. So when you're a leader, Again, you're the one who's creating the container for your team. You're setting the tone. So, you know, if you're feeling like you're kind of right on the edge of losing it, that's not the time. That's the time to take a little time out, have a cup of tea and get your bearings and, and then really be choiceful about how you want to show up. Yeah. 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 I mean, take a day out of the office, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. take a day off, take a couple of days off, take a week off. Take whatever you need to take off to not blow up on people. And, mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, because if you're at the point where you're going to blow up on people, you're burned out mm -hmm. and you're not taking care of yourself. And, you know, a burned out person is a crappy leader. That's just the nature of the beast because mm -hmm. your emotions are high. Your, your patience is low. Your demands are high. Your, your frustration level is high. The, the, People are walking on eggshells around you. It actually reduces the productivity of your staff. The best thing you can do for your business is just take some time off. And if you're sitting there going, oh, I can't, everything would fall apart. I promise you, you're, it's already falling apart mm -hmm. because you're just flaming it with your burnout. You are crispy crittered and you are sharing the flame. And that is not the best option. So, okay. I yeah. think we've said what we have to say on this one. I'm going to keep I this. I would really be interested though, for the listeners to send us your questions about leadership. Like what are your leadership challenges, opportunities, what are the questions you have? Do you have maybe, you know, kind of a situation that you're navigating? You'd love some thoughts on it. I have quite a bit of experience in this in this area so would love to support you in really stepping even more fully into the leader that you became that you came here to become yes 
So mm-hmm. if you have a question you want to share, just go to spiritguidespodcast.com and there is a little button that says Ask Kelly and you can just press the button and speak into your phone and it will let you record your question and we will answer it on the air. Just let us know when you make the recording whether or not we can use your voice or whether you want us to just read it out. Yeah. So, but yeah, we would love to answer those questions. I have a lot of experience in that realm as well. So that would be maze balls. So, mm-hmm. all right. So I think that's it for today. Join us tomorrow for Thursday thoughts and Friday for the ascend. And we'll be back again next week with this particular episode of the series. And as always, don't forget to like rate and subscribe. Have a great one. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh,